Hi, I'm Laura Marie, and I volunteer to speak about music and magic for a paganism group at the local Las Vegas Unitarian Universalist Church. So I thought I would give a talk with my spouse Ming recording kind of as a practice and retirement. And in case anybody in the larger world wanted to learn my thoughts about these topics. By way of preface, I'd like to say that I offer all of these ideas in a spirit of sharing and helpfulness. And if there's anything that I say that's helpful to you, I hope you can take it for your own and learn more and build on it. And if there's anything that bothers you or doesn't ring true for you, I hope you could leave it outside and uh, not bring it in to yourself and let it go. Uh, also, um, I'm speaking from my own experience and everything that I say is like as true as I know it based on my own life. So uh, thank you for hearing and respecting my truth. I have some notes on my phone. So a little about myself, I am Laura Marie. I help run the Las Vegas Radical Mental Health Collective. I live in community. I like to make scenes. Ecstatic dance is important, really important to my life. I also really care about fat liberation and disabled permaculture. And the permaculture is part of my spirituality. I'm a pantheist earth worshiper, and I'm also a goddess worshiper. I like to do rituals on my own and with my spouse Ming, and I feel like magic is not really a term that I use, but if I look at the definition and what magic means to me, like I feel like it's something I do on a daily basis. Uh, I did paganism as a young person, and then I did a sect of Hinduism for about 20 years including 10 years that I sang in the choir. So that was a lot of music for me there. The songs that I sang were mostly in Sanskrit and Bengali, but there was also songs that I've sang that were sacred in English, Spanish, Germ German. And when I was young, I played bassoon and other winds, and I like to play uke sometimes too, ukulele. Uh, my background, is half Mexican-American on my mom's side. And then my dad was a white guy who was born in England. Um, the desert is very sacred to me. So living in Las Vegas, I fell in love with uh, activism and the desert and my spouse Ming all at the same time about nine years ago. So my spouse and I moved to Las Vegas to build community around activism and peace work and anti-nuclearism and um, I want to build a functional help build a functional culture through radical mental health including ecstatic dance and love and liberation so that's a little bit about me and I wanted to say that uh, music is a really important part of my life I like that music is vibrational I like that it's sound based from my body to the body of others. I like, uh, I like the vibrations of my voice to come from my body and go onto the bodies of other people, including into their ears. So I feel like we talk about vibrations a lot, like as hippies or as um, activists or curious people or open-minded people. And I feel like there's kind of a, uh, metaphorical use of the word vibration, but then there's also literal vibrations of, of what I'm making with my vocal cords and what you're hearing with your ear parts. So I like the, the interplay of like the metaphorical vibration, like the vibe of something, and then like the more literal vibration, which is physical of our bodies. So I like the vibration of my singing and my voice to go on people, but also plants and mother earth and other animals. I feel like I can use singing and my voice to give, um, 
to give energy to a place. So I remember like when, when my spouse and I would go visit the Sacrament Temple in uh, Indian Springs. And I would like to sing mother songs in that temple. And I feel like singing the mother songs was a way to give love to the temple and give back to the temple. And kind of like bless the space with that mother energy with that with my from my specific body. So a lot of people could have mother love and bring it to that temple with offerings or prayers or ritual, but that these songs that I was singing, mostly in Sanskrit, were um, giving that specific like flavor of love to Sekhmet and to Mother Earth and to that space and like hopefully putting that goodness into that temple. I feel like, my, like singing is really good for that. Almost, I want to say like sanctifying or blessing it with that particular vibration, feeding life to it. Also, um, when I think of music, I think of the scale that we use in the West and the scales that are chosen by different cultures. And I also like to think about the microtonal, which is, um, you know, when, when the notes that go between the notes and um, the, the really special feelings that can come from those sounds. But probably my very favorite thing about music and singing is the breath, because I feel like uh, when I sing, that's a really good way to moderate my breath and to breathe in a way that's more intentional. And, uh, you know, when I learn about singing as a young person, I learned to like breathe from my belly, to use my diaphragm, to engage my diaphragm to support the sound. So it's not just like a singing that comes from your mouth or even from your throat or your lungs, but it could come from your diaphragm and be supported by your entire body, like your posture and, you know, how, how your whole body is standing. Um, and there's also the idea I learned about trying to sing from different parts of you, like literally, like sing from your uterus or sing from your, your uh, stomach, but also like sing from different parts of you, like metaphorically, like the different cells that you might have inside of you. So, um, singing like in the breath work to me is like calming, usually calming and grounding. And I really appreciate that. I feel like when I'm singing, I'm like in my body in a way that's unique and really special, but also singing can be used for like the opposite of calming and grounding kind of like to go to another place, uh, like ethereally or um, ecstatically. Uh, and I've been in situations where like, there's been a, when the music accelerates, so it can start slow and get really fast, where it's almost to like a frenzy. And that, um, that use of music can be really interesting for like gathering energy. But I wanted to say about singing, like singing together, like if a group of people is singing in unison, then the people are breathing together. And I feel like breathing together is like sacred and beautiful and a really big deal and something special that humans can do um, for a specific purpose or just for like a different kind of togetherness, that there's a lot of beauty in breathing together. I wanted to say about magic that for me, like a definition of magic that I would say I believe pretty much is uh, magic is about changing things in a spiritual way, as opposed to like a more logistical everyday way. It's also about uh, accessing the deepest parts of us. So it has to do with self-knowledge. It also has to do with gathering energy for a purpose. So like usually when we're doing ritual and we want to make a change or we want to, you know, send, send like a great thanks to the earth or we want to uh, maybe like acknowledge something, celebrate something, mark something like like a death or a birth or a pa any kind of passing or uh, transition. So to me, like magic is about gathering energy for a purpose. It's also about life force. To me, like magic and life force are kind of synonymous. So like the I feel like the the chi or the energy or the life force flowing in me that helps me stay living is um, is something about that that is magic or that maybe one contains the other. 
I'm not exactly sure. Like, there's definitely a lot of mystery there. Also, um, life force can relate to breath. So then when I think of inspiration, like to breathe, like to breathe in or to breathe out, or like uh, someone like breathing life into someone, uh, like in a creation myth, or someone breathing life into someone the way CPR used to be. Um, then I think about that, like singing is, is with the breath, life is with the breath, and yeah, the vocal cords and, and the ear parts that vibrate with that life. So something else pertaining to the magic and the music for me that's really important is dance. And ecstatic dance is something I've talked about elsewhere. But I wanted to mention that bodily truths can be accessed through movement. That I, I, I believe, at least for me, can't be accessed any other way. Um, I feel like emotions get loosened when I'm dancing, like emotions that were stuck, um, and that we store knowledge and we store our memories in our entire bodies. They're not just like in our heads in, a, in some gray matter or something, they're like everywhere in our whole self. Um, and dancing is a way to like keep all that emotion, which is really important to me. I feel like, um, yeah, like learning to move my body freely was a huge lesson that I didn't learn until I was an adult. When I was a kid, um, I was very repressed. And then when I was a teenager, I feel like dance was tied to being worthy and desirable. So it turned into like a mate finding thing. So then part of my lessons as an adult is to unhook the, um, the dance and the freedom of bodily movement unhook it from like the desire to be desirable or the desire to find like partners in a sexual way so to me um yeah the ecstatic dance is about being unconditionally unconditionally valid and how uh i exist you know i exist for many purposes and missions of my life but one of the things i exist for is my own well-being and that's valid and that's what i'm doing when i'm dancing in addition to like connecting with, with Mother God, connecting with myself, experiencing bodily truths, and um, doing all of that work, that specific work about my own well being. So, um, also with dance, even though I was just talking about ecstatic dance as kind of uh, inward focused, you know, I can't deny that a lot of dance is about sexiness and dance is used to like entice and arouse and mimic, sometimes mimic sex, um, the bodily movements and to create passion. And that dances with, as like staging grounds for like mate finding or nightclubs or bars for finding partners. That's not, that's not something that I enjoy personally, but a lot of people do. And, and dance is like, like definitely related to passion whether it's like the passion of connecting sexually with another or the, or the passion of the life force and the magic. Uh, something else I wanted to say about music uh, pertains to the repetition. I feel like something really magical about music and really appealing about it is the way that there is like a set format for certain kinds of songs that are very common, like with the verse, chorus, verse, bridge, you know, verse, like the way those, um, those things happen. Uh, it's very, uh, there's a lot of freedom within that format. Uh, like, likewise, like chanting, like the repetition of chanting can be, um, very special and can be related to ecstatic states. So doing something like Japa, you can go into a different mentality that's doing like a spiritual practice or kirtan that has the repetition. Like I was mentioning, like like starting slow and increasing the tempo um, in a unison way can it create an ecstatic state in a group, which which was really like special for me to experience. And the, the, the effect was so powerful doing like kirtan in a concert or even sometimes in like a Hare Krishna temple that, that was dance and chanting felt almost like being high, like as if I was on a drug, which I had not taken any drugs, 
Like it was a very physiological, rich experience that was like a, definitely an altered state in a group that felt meaningful and good, but it was um, just based on like our own bodies making their own response, you know, to the music and the dance. It wasn't like chemical from an outside force. So I feel like this is getting long, but there are a few, a few more things I wanted to say. I wanted to say that paganism and witchery and the earth-based spirituality, um, for me, it's all about nature and being an animal and part of nature. So dance um, as a way to act, or, or dance and music and singing and magic, like all accessing the breath, all about embodiedness, movement, liveliness, and like wickness, like having that life force that's like like lively and vibrant and real and animating inside of us. And yeah, using music in ritual settings to like set a mood or build the energy as part of the magic. I feel like part of our brains, a different part of our brains from the usual gets activated by the um, music being in, like employed and like the vibrations touching us. So part of our, a different part of our brains can get pulled into the experience. It's not a regular use of language or sound. And um, I really favor music as grounding and singing to the earth, singing to God, the God in me, singing to my own body. I like learning about other cultures through their music. And I like thinking about power based on music because some forms of music are really um, like prioritized and valued in cultures more than others. I know for example, like, um, like for example, like rap and hip hop, if they're considered this like side genre to a lot of people who I've known, like that, oh, that's not really music or that's nothing, any, nothing I would ever listen to. Like it seems like the power and the race and the oppression can be tied to what music someone chooses. And um, also like popular versus classical music. I remember I had a friend when I was a kid who was a violinist and her dad didn't let her listen to popular music. And when he caught her listening to popular music, he took it away the tape and threw it away. Like he was trying to control her and her life and her values by controlling the music that she was hearing. And I found that like a really intense thing to witness when I was a teenager to see that that dad doing that to my friend and the music that I've given given that I had given to her being thrown away as of no worth like she was he was like editing her experience and trying to form her into the person she he wanted her to be like through that through the music that she was listening to and also like uh, controlling uh, lyrics like lyrics warnings on music that you can try to control culture by trying to control the music. And to me, like, that's really fascinating. Um, I'd like to sing three stanzas of a sacred song, but I feel like this is getting too long and I'm not gonna do that in this uh, video. But if you have any questions about me or my experience or knowledge of music or dance uh, with magic, I'm really happy to talk about it. Like you could contact me uh, or you can uh, make a comment on this video when I try to get back to you and um, thank you for sharing my uh, facts about this topic and um, I wish a lot of joy to you with music and breath and dance and magic. Thank you.